Hello and welcome everyone. In the previous video we learned about how to set up Apollo client and in this video we're going to learn about how to fetch the menus from WordPress via GraphQL. First thing I'm going to do is just create a few pages from WordPress. I'll come to pages in the WordPress and create home, publish it, just name it as, just put content as home, content and let's create a couple more. So you've got all of these pages, then we'll go to appearance, menus, let's create a header menu. So I'm going to name it as header menu and then I'm going to click on create and make sure the HCMS header menu is selected. So that is uh, this menu, these two menus are actually registered by the headless CMS plugin that you've activated. So make sure that's activated if it isn't. And then let's add a couple pages like uh, about and privacy policy. I don't think we need to add the home and I'm going to uncheck the footer and just save it. Move this a little bit on top, save it, that's it. And then let's also create another menu which will be footer menu. Let's name it as footer menu and I'm going to ensure I select HCMS footer menu which is this one. And then click on create menu and then just add the same, the same pages here just for Okay, awesome. Great, and I think we can also create some of the child pages as well. So let's go to pages and just name them like child one and just one more, child two, of course you can name them whatever you want. I'm just naming them like so. Child 2. Publish. Go back to menus. And let's just add the child 1 and 2 to the header menu. Select that. Child 1 and 2. Add to menu. And I'm just probably going to add that to child 2. Child 1 like so. Okay. Let's save menu. We hit the save button, which is great. Now, next thing we want to do is fetch it. So we'll go to uh, the GraphQL, GraphQL IDE. And this is where you're going to find all of the query uh, fields. So it's the menu items that we are looking for. Okay, and we'll select where, and then it's going to be, I'm going to select location and our location will be for the header. So we'll click on header. And then what all do we need? We need to click on edges, then node. We need the ID, the label. We need the URL, and then we also need the path. Okay, that's it. So you can see that when I clicked on this, all of these were automatically added here. So you know when you are clicking like this it just keeps getting added and you can anytime like uncheck it like so and it gets removed so that's the beauty of graphql unlike rest api where it's going to give you everything uh graphql is just going to give you whatever you ask for it's not going to give you all the fields it has okay it's not going to give you the data for all the fields it has great so let's fetch it there you go so now you can see that you've got about you've got child one child two uh, there's something you need to do will be make sure that the parent ID is actually zero. Okay, and now you're only going to get the parents, right? And um, inside of the, then you need the child menus also. So do we have something called child menus? Yes, we have child items. Again, uh, you're going to do edges, node, and then we'll just do the same thing which is id label url and path so i'm just going to open it like so and this one and then you can also pretify it by clicking on pretify and then hit it and then now you can see that th since the about has the two child menus child one and child two we've got that and then similarly the privacy policy doesn't have any child children so it's showing like that so let me compare that so click on menus 
So you can see that about has got this and these two ch children and then privacy policy has got this. So the beauty of is the beauty of this is that without having to code anything, you actually getting to have all of the queries available in the back end uh, that you can use in the front end as well, right? You didn't have to write any PHP code. In fact, if I'm not a PHP developer, I can still use this, which is brilliant, right? Great. Um, so you've got all of the queries and similarly, we'll get the footer menus also. So maybe we can name this as header menus and then colon because we're going to be doing the same query again. So you can create an alias for it. You can hide the explorer like so. You can you can also drag it like so. And then I'm just going to copy the same thing and then paste it here. And this time I'll call it footer menus. Footer menus. And in the location, I'll say footer SMS menu footer. Yeah. And that's it. And I don't think we need children in the footer menus. This is fine. If you want, you can add it, but I won't. Okay, let's fetch it. And what do we get on the right hand side? You can see that you've got header menus that can minimize it. And then we also got the footer menus as well, right? So you've got the header menu, which we checked earlier. And then we have the footer menu as well. This one. Okay. Awesome. Great. Now, all we have to do is just use this query onto the front end, correct? So how do we do that? So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the back uh, front end and I'm going to close all of this for now. And then I'm going to go to source and create a directory called queries. Okay, and this is where I'm going to write all my queries. So I want to keep things organized because as your project grows bigger, it becomes difficult to manage things if you are just putting everything in one file. So since it's related to menus, I can just call this as get menu. Get menus, yep. Yeah. Okay, and then next thing you need to do is import GQL, okay, from Apollo client. And then you're gonna do export const and then get menus equals GQL. So GQL and then backticks. And this is where you'll paste your query, okay? So I'm gonna paste my query, oops. Where's my query? Here it is. So I'm gonna paste my query here, like so, okay? So I've got my queries here. I've got header menus, I've got footer menus, which is brilliant. Now, since you are going to be using this over and over again, you can see that you're using it here, you're using it here, yeah. It is better to break it into fragments. This is where I'm going to introduce fragments to you. So you can do fragments. I've actually written a blog on this, on fragments. You can check it out if you want. So you go to coditech.com slash blogs. So I'm not going to uh, spend too much time in explaining fragments to you. If you might already be aware of it, you can search it here, fragment, here it is. Uh, this is a blog I've written on fragments, you can check it out. And it talks about, you know, what fragments are. It says that, you know, just a piece of code or logic that can be shared between multiple queries. So like I explained to you, this is like a typical situation where we should use fragments because you can see that we are repeating our stuff, right? So we should follow the dry rule, which means do not repeat yourself, right? So for that, we can create fragments like so, so you can read about it. But yeah, let's get to how we can create fragments over here. Uh, so I'm going to call it, oops, I'm going to call it menus. Okay, and inside of it, how do we create it? Uh, you need to create a const and then call it like menu fragment equals okay and then back tick and you just say fragment fragment and then the name of the fragment so I want to name it as menu fragment and then you have to say what is the type so on what so how do we know what is the type so let's go back to GraphQL let's click on docs 
what are we what what are we trying to query we're trying to query the menu items here so you you will search that menu items there you go you click on that and inside of this uh, we are actually going to click on this root query to items then we did edges so let's follow that path right so if you remember let me open this one up for you so we did edges then we did node yeah so let's do edges and then click on this and then click on the node so do you see what is the name of the node here so what we're trying to do is that we want to be able to reuse this item over here this all of this and where does this lie look at the parent of it so what is its parent its parent is this node correct so what th what is the type of that node well the type of the no node is menu item and that's what you're going to write over here right menu item and then inside of this you can put id label url and path like so yeah just going to arrange it properly there you go okay now all you have to do is just export default menu fragment and then you can just use it simply how do we use it go back to menus and wherever you have used all of these fields under node you just have to replace that with dot 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 menu fragment right so it's it's just like your spread operator it's going to spread all of this uh, these fields over here so this and this means the same thing yeah just that's why we're using the spread operator so menu fragment but by just spreading it it won't be available directly right why because I haven't imported it so I need to import it on top and also I need to add it here so what I'm going to do is I'll say uh, dollar sign and then inside of this we'll say menu fragment like so that's it okay and then you must have observed that it's already imported on the top that's a feature of PHP Storm. Okay, uh, it's already imported that from fragments, which is great. I don't have to do that manually. And then just make sure that uh, copy this and wherever you've used it, just replace it with menu fragment. Okay, over here as well. This is awesome. Perfect. So our get menus query is ready. All I have to do is just query it. So how do I query? How do I get this data to our components? Okay, so we're going to find that out in, our, in the next video. So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And um, please start my repository to support my work like all, all of these beautiful people have. And please follow me on GitHub. My GitHub handle is Imran Ait Sayed. And I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.